right, we're gonna have some fun today. I really wanted to see how the 580 still works with modern games. So I'm gonna play a couple modern games and then we'll talk about just how that GPU works because it's around 100, 110, $115 still. And I think the RX 580 from AMD is one of the best graphics cards ever made because it still works so well. So we're gonna take a look at one of those an eight gigabyte variety from a company you might not have heard of. So I wanted to test it out just to see how it is because it also has DVI, which is interesting. Uh, and then I'm gonna also test out a Raspberry Pi. And then I'm gonna talk about gallium nitride for a little bit and then I'll show you some accessories in this Timu video. First off, I want to tell you about the deals they have going on. All right now, you've got a hundred dollar coupon bundle. Full disclosure, I don't use any apps on my phone for any stores. I just use the websites and give them the information I want to. But if you want to go here and download the app, you can do that. Otherwise, we have um, a way that you can grab this over on their website and get your hundred dollar coupon bundle. So head on over to Timu and get that. Also, I've been grabbing graphics cards on here whenever they go on flash sales, and sometimes you'll see them on flash sale. I ended up getting a forty sixty. <laughs> Speaking of flash, so yeah, I ended up grabbing a 4060 Ti on flash sale for around $300. So I'm, it's the one I'm using in this machine I'm capturing with right now, and it's working just fine. So anyway, let's take a look at this graphics card. Here's the one I got, and it comes in a nice square sleek case from Soyo, and it's an RX 580 from AMD. It's been around for a long time, but it's still works really well. I like to come down here and look and just see what the reviews are. So anyway, let's go ahead and see how this works with a couple different games. Now, first off, I want to try Avowed, even though I don't think it's the best game ever made, but it's new and it uses the Unreal Engine 5, and that'll give us a good idea of how the Unreal Engine 5 works. And it'll, you know, that'll also give us an idea of how games like Stalker and stuff work. So I'm not going to test Stalker. I don't feel like it. <laughs> I don't feel like install it. it takes an hour to install that damn game after that i want to try out hitman just for fun and then we'll see what else we can play um, it'll also play slightly older games like cyberpunk it's kind of shocking that a card in this price range plays that game so well so yeah all right let's see what we can do here in avowed running at 1080p i'm gonna leave amd fidelity fx3 on because i don't think we're gonna have much of a choice i'll leave it on quality though so it's at least that and then here's what we're going to use medium view distance and then low on just about everything else and i'll bring a couple of these things up if it runs okay like this on 1080p all right so here's what we got here's how it looks um i think i will leave it here so yeah you can play about on low and it i mean on low it looks pretty good the lighting looks a little bit flat to me but you know we're getting 30s and 40s which is exactly what i wanted to get this mouse is not tuned for this i'm using a not a gaming mouse, but whatever. Doesn't look like it does on my 4080, but looks pretty good. So if you're feeling left out, you can play this, or you could just, I don't know, <laughs> play Oblivion or something. All right, so we've got Hitman World of Assassinations. Right now there's a new DLC with some DJ stuff. Um, I don't know much about the DJ stuff, but I like the fact that we can now get everything together in one bundle. So you get the, the basically the whole trilogy when you grab this. And then plus there's some more expansions. So yeah, keep getting new missions, new contracts. There's a lot of cool stuff here. But I do have one small problem with the World of Assassination, and that is that uh, it requires an internet connection, even though it's a single player game. So that's kind of annoying, but yeah. So let's see here. We're just going to run this on medium. I like to crank this up. Uh, medium, medium, shadow quality, ultra. Let's see what we get with this. I'll do high for shadow quality. All right, let's just see how it runs here on kind of a medium high setting. Yeah, 60 FPS, and look at this. This looks better than a lot of games that just came out, in my opinion. I don't know, something about the way it looks. So yeah, we're getting close to 60 FPS. Let's go in here and get some headphones, shall we? Got this feel, oh, oh no, trespassing. I was found trespassing. How could I get myself caught like that? You ever been to Chongqing? It's crazy. So if you haven't played Hitman, it's a totally different kind of game when you compare it to like other action games, because I'm, right now I'm wearing a disguise, of course, and you have objectives and different ways you can do them. It's mostly a stealth game, but not really. I mean, you can go full action if you want to, but this just kind of reminds me of the old games, you know, like the old Hitman games. It runs really, really well. I just don't like the always online thing. If the game price is good, it's like I can almost be pragmatic and be like, all right, yeah, we can, we can handle some of this. We can handle some of the always online stuff. God, this is a huge place. And one thing you'll notice about Chongqing is there's just stairs everywhere. So they nailed that. So if you like DJs and you want like a pumping environment, then check out the new content. That's what they sent over. But I, I mainly said yes because I wanted the entire experience. I wanted to grab a key for everything because I haven't played this yet. And it's been quite a bit of fun. If they get rid of the always online nonsense, then it's a very, very easy game to recommend. 
If that stays in place, maybe not. Next up, the Raspberry Pi is finally becoming available, uh, more readily available, and you can get this entire kit for only 119. So let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi kit that I'm picking up right now. You got the eight gigabyte board, that's the eight gigabytes of RAM. And then we have our shell here with the fan that you can plug in and the shell like sandwiches on the top and bottom and it comes with all the thermal pads and screws you need to get that set up. I'm not gonna install that right now because I'm actually gonna get a hat to allow me to do RGB. It'll actually do SCART and VGA and I'll have to get a SCART to RGB converter, but hey, recall box makes one, so that's pretty cool. So we've got a couple of HDMI right there on the side. We've got USB 3. And then on the other end there of the Raspberry Pi, we've got our USB, we've got our SD card slot on the bottom, and then we also have our gigabit ethernet. The Raspberry Pi for hundred bucks is pretty fast. All right, I'm gonna install Recallbox. It's really easy. You just come over here to Recallbox's website, scroll down and it says, I want one. Well, I've already got a thing. So I'm just gonna click on download, click on Raspberry Pi, click on Pi 5 right there, click on your operating system. I got Windows and it's going to download the Raspberry Pi Imager. Once you open that up, we can run the Raspberry Pi Imager. There we go. Check this out. You just choose your device. I've got a Raspberry Pi 5. Choose your OS. We got all these OSs you can install. So if you don't want to install something else that's not that, you can. But I'm going to click on emulation and all that and click on recall box and then just click on this and then you just pick your storage. Put your SD card in there that you, you got. I've got a bigger SD card, so I'm going to use that one. Choose your storage, hit next, and you're done. Then you just take your SD card, plug it into your Raspberry Pi, plug up a controller, and turn it on. That's it. Then you just wait a few minutes. It'll install everything. And then you can throw some ROMs on there. Now, how do you do that? Well, there's two different ways. You can throw it back in your computer and go into the properties and assign a drive letter to the hidden drive that's on there. That's the difficult way, but it's the fast way. The easy way is just to go into your network settings on your Raspberry Pi on your recall box, and it'll tell you your IP address after you've signed on, whether you do it with Wi-Fi or with Ethernet. Just get your IP address or just go to whack whack recall box. Just you know, open up your run command and do whack whack recall box or whack whack and then put in your entire IP address. Whack whack is backslash backslash, but no one wants to say that, do they? No, they don't. Let's see if that works. Now we have ROMs USB, ROMs internal. So we have all these different folders that we can put stuff. Put your BIOS files in here, it seems like. All right, there we go, cool. And then we got our ROMs internal and they have already created all the folders for you. If you don't know what one of these folders means, you just have to look it up. This is uh, Famicom Disk Station. So yeah, there's all this stuff. Final Burn Neo, these are for arcade games. So go in here and drop some games in. I'll do that right now. So I put up my games on there and then I wanted to search for my games. So what I did was just go in here to my game system, press start for options, then go down to update games list and press that. So I'm not gonna do it right now because I've already done it. Now, if you want to show the, uh, the preview pictures and all that, what we need to do is hit our start button here from the main menu and then go down to our scraper. Scrape from screen scraper. There we go. Select my systems. All right, that's good. Then just press the back button and do a scrape now. This will take a little bit of time while it looks up all of the screenshots and stuff. So we can just tell it to run in the background. See, it's already scraping stuff for the Super Nintendo. So the graphics, um, if you want to put on some CRT filters and stuff, you can do that. But that goes beyond the scope of this video. Oh, geez, I'm going to get whipped. Let's try to push this thing a little bit, see how the PSP plays. I've never played God of War. I have no idea what I'm doing, so don't judge me. Jeez. I'm gonna grab somebody, come here. You. Over here. How about you next? Alright, now if you need to save your game or whatever, you just hold down your hotkey, which is generally your home button and then press B. Ah, look out. And we can pick our save states over here. Save state right there, Oop. Let's uh, not die. And then I'll do it again, hotkey B, and we can go into our settings right here and change a few different things like our system settings. So anyway, once you get that up and running and throw some ROMs on there, it's really cool, it works just fine. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Um, if you wanna install something else, be my guest. But the point of this was just that, hey, the Raspberry Pi 5 is finally starting to show up at prices that are somewhat reasonable. For a while, when it was going for like ridiculous prices, it was like, I'm just gonna grab a mini PC instead. You know, like hey, x86, why not? But now that it's in this price range, it's um, pretty interesting. And the Raspberry Pi 5 is substantially faster than the other ones. Still not fast enough to run PS2, Switch, uh, you know, 3DS, 
but if you want to play like all the old retro stuff that's before that even some dreamcast and everything uh, psp is probably the craziest thing you can play on that if you don't turn it up too high maybe one or two x rendering depending on the game but yeah works pretty well all right, next up, let's talk about gallium nitride and gallium nitride chargers because that's the new thing, right? Gallium nitride is just a new uh, material, new technology that is way cooler and more efficient when it comes to charging devices. And that was the real problem we were hitting. We were hitting like a heat threshold with a lot of these devices. So uh, the item I wanted was just already sold out, but I'll show you one that's just like it right here. So yeah, here's what I got. I really wanted gallium nitride because I want to be able to charge a whole bunch of stuff and I don't want it to get too ridiculously hot. And like this one, the top two ports there, you can charge, they're like 100 watt. And it breaks it down. The one I got is out of stock right now, but it broke it down like everything so you could see exactly how many watts each different port had. Um, so yeah, those are cool. And then if you want something a little bit smaller, you can get this. And this one will give you 85 watts. The, the port on the bottom is the one where all the power goes, right? So plug that up and that'll keep your, your USB-C notebook or tablet charged up. And then you can also charge other devices like, I don't know, game consoles or your, uh, your phones or whatever. These things are great. I just always like to grab one of these things, especially when they're on sale, and throw them in my bag. Because this can replace your laptop charger. That's what I've done. Grabbed on Timu a while back one just like this and just threw it on in my bag. And whenever I go somewhere, I just plug up the USB-C to the bottom. You have to make sure your USB-C cable says that it can handle whatever wattage you want to put through there because not all USB-C cables are the same. Some are thick, some are thin, some are high gauge, some are low gauge, some have the circuitry for different things. Some of them are USB-4, some of them are not. Some of them can do 4K video, some of them cannot. USB is a, USB-C is a messy standard because it could be any thing. All right, anyway, let's just move on and take a look at some accessories for these graphics cards. Now, I've been looking at some big, fat graphics cards. I'm going to make a video pretty soon about um, a new graphics card I picked up, a 480 Super, and uh, I need one of these. But this could work with any graphics card. So I wanted to show you some of the options because we don't want droop. You don't want stress on your PCI Express bracket. And then the graphics cards these days, they're so freaking big. So we have a few different options. Now, this one, it is something that you can screw into your case right there on the bottom. So it's 4.72 inch all metal. These things are solid and uh, yeah, you could stand it up anyway. It, you don't even actually have to screw it down. You know, you don't have to do that. As long as you got a spot where you can like create some tension by tightening it, you can just set it up that way. And then if you have smaller graphics cards or whatever, we can get these. So I got one of these in two different sizes. I got the, the medium size and the the long size didn't get the short style even though i think i probably should have for one of my itx sized cases but these are interesting because they've got a texture on the bottom they actually have a little stand as well little stand on the bottom see that little foot and on the bottom of that there's like a little bit of adhesive so you can stick it down to make sure it doesn't wobble around and then you can extend the top right there and it's got a, a rubber textured surface sort of some knurling on there so that it'll grip you're not going to have to worry too awful much, but yeah. You can see how these things extend. They hold your graphics card up and keep it from drooping. Keep your PCI Express socket nice and whatever. This is $1.98. I'm not selling this any harder. You should be using these things, all right? If you're building a system, just get a, get a few of these things like I did. I just grab a few because whenever I'm building a system, if the GPU's big, I'll grab one of those, smack it in there, and there it is. I don't care if I lose it because it was a couple bucks, but, you know, grab a few so you got a few around to you know just have sitting there anyway that's all the timu stuff for today be sure to head over there for the sale bag incredible discounts they say but yeah you can do the what is this that keeps showing up let's see if i refresh they really want me to buy that thing i don't know why they think i, I want that i've never purchased anything like that and this is my shopping cart at the moment <laughs> uh, they're like you're a nerd you want some anime butts don't you anyway so head on over there get your hundred dollar coupon all the links are going to be down in the description let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.